So here's a hypothetical what if for you. Let's say Saucery had accomplished what he wanted, or at least he got away with, you know, he escaped from the fight with Grandy and, and um, Sakura. Okay. Let's say that happened. He got away. So they don't kill him. Like, he, he basically, he, good enough is good enough, right? He's like, you know, what was he really trying to do? That? I guess he was just staying to kill him. Like, that was his only purpose. Because the other dude, Deidre, or whatever his name is, he's the one that had uh, Garb's corpse, which they apparently needed for some reason. Or were they just using it as bait for Naruto? Maybe that was the case. Anyway, Naruto's not there. He's the one they actually want. So what is Sasori really trying to do here? You know, I guess he just wanted to kill Granny. I get you. Know, I don't think Sakura mattered to him either way. But like, so that's what he's trying to do. I guess he wanted to take her out. Let's say he gets away. Ten days later, he keeps the meeting on the bridge. Gray hair betrays him. Orochimaru shows up. What do you think happens? Who do you think wins? Remember how formidable Saucery was. Like, dude, he had his first puppet was awesome. But I guess probably that first attack would have maybe shattered the first puppet. Okay, so then you've got, he's got his other puppet for him. And he's also able to summon these puppets. Like he was able to summon 100 puppets, right? And it didn't take you very long to do that. Who do you think wins? I think it's an even fight, honestly. Because Saucery was goddamned impressive. And it's only because Granny knew him and knew how to uh, affect him emotionally that turned the tide. And maybe he kind of gave up a little bit there at the end. Somebody speculated that he was just tired and he was done. I don't think you have that happening if it's Orochimaru and Greyhair. First of all, he's going to be pissed off that Greyhair turned on him. Then I don't think he likes Orochimaru. <laughs> I don't think there's any love loss either way over there, right? So he's not going to bitch out. He's going to fight to the death with everything he has. I think he gives them a run for money. And I wouldn't be surprised if he won. I'm very curious what you think. That would be very interesting because it was all set up. Like, that's what they came there to do. They came there to kill him. They didn't even know it was going to be our guys showing up, right? They got a whole other situation on their hands. But that's a very interesting what if. I'm sure fans have played with that idea for a long time. you know. But I'm just now seeing it. So you know, this is my first opportunity. At any rate, let's go ahead and get into this. This is episode 43. And we're going on one. Three, two, one. Speared. Fricasseed. <laughs> man, he makes the most disgusting ass noises. Come on, man. <laughs> Blah. My favorite was Deidre. When his hand mouth spit out some clay and went, Bleh. yeah, yeah, it was, it was very soft. It wasn't very loud at all, but like I heard it, I was, like, <laughs> I think I heard it in editing. I was editing a short when I heard it. I was like, that is repulsive. <laughs> well, shit. Like I said, it's a little hard to see who's on top right now, even though it looks like it's Orochimaru. Who the hell knows? Enough dramatics. There's no way she thinks he's dead. So, I mean, come on, calm down. Yeah, I don't buy it. By the way, you know, the nine-tailed fox? Playing pin to tail on the fox would be very complicated, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, shit. I think he's pissed. <laughs> Do you think Sai's still on your side? Because I don't. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, look at him, lurking over there. How's the peeping? Uh, 
walk up to him like, hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> what you doing? Exactly. Okay, perpetrated. He's pretending size in contact with him so that she doesn't suspect anything. Yep. Ghost Naruto is very happy. <laughs> nice. Let's see what you did there. So what are we going to do about this dude? We just chilling? We all good? Like he's literally like, you know, what? 20 feet away? You going to encase him in a little box so you can take him in a to-go box? So you can take him to go? Oh, shit. You don't say. Get this damn sword off me. I'm thinking the fox is stronger. <laughs> Jesus. Tell you what, man. This collateral damage is live. You better have your head on a swivel. He's choking on it. Choke on it, bitch. Yeah, you need to have your head on a swivel, man. That collateral damage is a bug. <laughs> we got people all over the place trying to like avoid the, these things. That Sakura almost got knocked out twice in ten minutes. That's what gets you in football, by the way. You know the concussions. The first concussion is bad. Don't get me wrong; it is bad. But it's when you stay in the game and you get a second concussion on the same day that can cause permanent brain damage. So Sakura, you know, I'm interrupting myself, but. It's a TV thing where somebody gets hit in the head and gets knocked out. If you get rendered unconscious because of a blow to your head, that is serious ref repercussions. You either have a concussion or you got a fractured skull. So I don't see any blood coming out of her ears or nose, and she was unconscious. She was she was unconscious. Now, was it a blow to a head? Or was it just her whole body? Uh, probably to the head. That's what I'm thinking. So anyway, that's a concussion. Right? She, she was rendered unconscious because of a blow to the head. That's a concussion. Get a second one in the same day, you're going to have permanent neurological damage. That's why you, uh, these football players have CTE. You know, they stay in the game when they've already got a concussion. Or they come back from Even days later, it can be still a problem, right? Your brain has to be completely healed for it not to do additional damage. So, point is, he saved her ass and her brain by getting her out of the way. I got to say, I'm not 100% that I trust this son of a bitch, you know, the uh, Yamamoto. But I trust him against Orochimaru because we've seen enough to know that he's not on that side. I don't know about Sai. Sai might be on that side. But I trust him against this dude. I may not trust him against the other guys. The League of Evil or whatever they're called. <laughs> it's monsters. This is Kaiju. Yep. Like Godzilla and whatever Godzilla fights. I don't really watch those movies. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Pull that shit back in your mouth. <laughs> he really likes that snake sword, don't he? Expecting that fox to come out. Like, Where are you going? Give me the sword. That's right. Back in there, buddy. <laughs> this is wild as hell. I never expected this. Well, I guess you have to do it yourself there. <laughs> Pissed. Maybe we should back further up. What do you think? 
We don't really need your color commentary. <laughs> I like his little fox ears. Is that what it is? Or is he just out of control? Yeah, the flashbacks seem to tell us he's right. I don't necessarily take what bad guys say at face value. That feels foolish. Oh, man, you're making her cry. Well, as long as he kills Orochimaru. <laughs> what a dick. Why are you trolling us? And why is everybody ignoring him? Like, he's a bad guy. Do something about him. Attack him. I can't believe the three of us are just standing here within range of each other, just chilling. This is why you shouldn't have uh, emotional entanglements with the people you work with. Let's say this was, um, I don't know, people, some ninjas who have never met Naruto, right? So they're standing here, and this, this is happening here. They're going to turn around and capture Gray Hair because he's still a resource. If nothing else, you walk out of here with him. But they don't give a shit. They're just watching the fight because they're so obsessed with Naruto, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Jump his ass, man. Jump this dude. We need his information. Oh. Never mind. I thought for a second she was going to be professional. Can she reach him? Is she going to bring him back from the brink? I think so. Oh, uh, no? No, I guess not. He's about to cream her ass. <laughs> He's about to smoke her ass, man. That's my question. How long do you think that neck is? A couple hundred feet? It's crazy, man. Oh, Jesus effing Christ. <laughs> hey, this dude is the most disgusting character ever on TV. And I've seen those yuck mouth commercials. <laughs> This is pretty much yuck mouth right here. What the effing hell, man? You don't really have a mouth. You just have an anus. Just anything subject come out here. So it looks like he is against Orochimaru. Okay. Maybe that's the secret mission. Execute this son of a bitch. This submission takes priority over anything else, right? Because like he's not tripping about Naruto. And that, that's the right thing to do. Look, I like Naruto. I do. Fine, I have no problem. And I know... Right. <laughs> you can run away like a little bitch. <laughs> oh, he's tired. Take a little nappy poo. You should have brought your buddy with you. Oh, shit. Concussion number two. Here comes a permanent brain damage. <laughs> what a troll. F this guy. You can't hold me with wood? What are you trying to do? Man, 
man. He's going to bust out of that wood so hard. <laughs> His little floppy ears. Oh, he's cute. I don't know. I guess that wood's really strong, man. She is knocked unconscious again. <laughs> what an effing troll that guy is. Lay one finger on her. That fox will tear your ass up. I know he hurt her, but I still think he would protect her. Yeah, <laughs> what's up, chump? Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Don't you be putting that poison in her. It may heal her, but maybe you're giving her cancer. We don't know. Huh. Akasuke. I can never remember that name. Yeah, I suppose. How very pragmatic of you. We're taking you in. You're under arrest. You can be, you can be staying around forever because we're taking your ass in. We're getting you right now. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, you better run, you little bitch. Ah, shit. The wood wasn't going to hold him. Okay, that's fine. I get it. He's awesome. I really would like to be able to teleport, though. That'd be cool. What's up, bro? I knew it. You backstabbing weasel. This shit better work. Looks like it is. Dude, you need to stop hulking out. Ha! <laughs> it's quite the cage grant to take him home in. Now, I've said it before, this animation is just incredible. It's really, really good. 
Because here's the thing, anybody can do animation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the creativity of designing what they're designing here. The the static page can only show so much. They have to turn that into moving images. And what they've done is phenomenal. But you have to think of it first. See, live action is limited by the actual space and you know the budget and you know the people you cast. There is no no kind of there's the only limitation in animation is your is, is your imagination. I mean, yeah, you know, certain things cost more money, but not really, not in this day and age. <laughs> He's only got one or two more of these in him, man. He needs to knock this shit off. Kill him. Huh. See now, geezer. <laughs> I was going to, asshole. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have called you asshole, should I? <laughs> Whatever. Kill the messenger. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Place cliffhanger here. You didn't even deliver your message. Unless they did it when we, you know, shit. Disgusting. What I was expecting was that they were going to um, cut before he says a message. But I guess Orochimari don't give a shit what, he, what this guy has to say. Like, whatever you have to say, I don't care. Unless he told him somehow, like, they, there was no edit to, to indicate that. Usually they would cut away something else and come back and then he would do the nice thing. So, my read of the situation is he didn't even care what you had to say. But anyway, um, I wanted to address something else here. When I was talking about how unprofessional Sakura is, here's the thing. Somehow, you know, because the first series was plot heavy. And it was plot driven instead of being character driven. One Piece is character driven. You have plot. It's a spectrum, of course. If you go from zero, completely character-driven, 10 is completely plot-driven, everything's going to be somewhere in between, right? So one piece is, you know, two, because it's really close to, you know, being mostly character-driven, but obviously there's some plot. And then, you know, Naruto, the, the original series, was an eight, mostly plot-driven, but obviously you have a characterization. You know what I'm saying? It was So that's what it was. But the two shows are flipped. Where I'm at with one piece right now, it's more plot-driven. It's not nearly as character-driven as it used to be. And this seems to be going towards character-driven instead of plot-driven. Case in point. The drama here is Sakura is upset with what's happening with Naruto. And that's the only thing she should think of. And she's just going to try to help him. And Sensei is basically that's all he's doing too. He's thinking of uh, Naruto as well. That's what we care about. That we care about what's happening with Naruto, Naruto even though... We came here to ki capture, I almost said kidnap, but that's not really right. We came here to capture gray hair. That was the job. Come here and capture. Now, that was to lead us to Orochimaru, but really to lead us to where Sasuke was. Where's Sasuke? This guy knows. And you want any other information, yes. That was your mission. Why did that suddenly not become your mission when Naruto changes? It's because in a plot-driven show, they would have been like, this is very tragic. Hey, 
uh, Sakura. This is very tragic, but we got to focus on what we're supposed to be doing here. Let's jump this dude. Get him, right? In a plot-driven show, that's what would happen. This is a character-driven show now. Now it's just about the characters and their, and their relationships with each other, and that's all that matters. Now, like I said, again, Spectrum, there is plot, of course, happening, but it's, I've seen this, it's been a shift. That, that That's plain as day, and like it was, I was in a real situation, if I was a mission leader, it, you got to compartmentalize. It doesn't matter what's happening to Naruto over there. He's holding off Orochimaru, so that means we can do our job and capture the son of a bitch. Once he's captured, we'll do what we can for Naruto. But you can't just drop everything, oh my gosh, you know, it's like, imagine like if uh, Navy SEALs, you know, I was talking about that uh, because of uh, Psy, right? Navy SEALs, there's four of them, and they're here, and their job is to kidnap the, the prime minister of some country because he's a dictator or whatever. So they get to his, his facility, and one of them sprains his ankle. It's like, oh my God, well, I, my ankle really hurts. I can't go any further. I'm going to go back by myself. Well, he goes back by himself, he's going to be captured and killed, right? So the other three, no, 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 we can't lose you. No, let's go with you. And so they get him all the way back to the beach. The prime minister Fs off to some other country like you were supposed to. Like, you only had this window of 10 hours. That would never happen. Come on, man. That would never happen. It wouldn't matter. Like, say one of the one of these four special forces, he's a heroin addict. He gets an overdose. It's like, oh, shit. Well, we need to stay here and take care of him getting through this overdose. We're going to miss our window of opportunity. It would never happen, man. Never happen. The mission is what matters. That's what you're here to do. You have a window of opportunity. You got to take care of the window of opportunity. Because real life is plot driven, really. Like, I know it's also character driven, it's also ego driven, and everything else, right? But real life has all that going on. It depends on the situation. In a crucial situation, you can't worry about what your team members are doing. You got you got this window of opportunity, you got to satisfy the mission. You have to complete the mission. And there are shows where that, you know, that's priority, right? Because they're plot driven. But this isn't real life. This is a story. And the story they want to tell is the characters and their relations with each other. That's what matters. That's the heart of the show. And that's not where I thought they were going to be going with all this. It was there all along. And the characterization, the character arcs, and their relations with each other is becoming more and more important as the further we go along. So I just think that's interesting. That's all. Like, I was still treating this like the plot driven show it used to be. That's why I was saying she's an idiot for running towards Naruto. But like they're te- they want to tell the story of the relationship between these characters. The mission is just what allows that to happen. If we don't go on this mission, Naruto doesn't get confronted with Orochimaru, and Orochimaru doesn't bring out the monster, right? The point is to bring out the monster. The point is the mission. Like in, initially, the point seemed to be the mission, but the point is actually just the characters, right? So, so that's just interesting. That's not what I thought they were going to be doing.